it is officially time for the second round of midterms. I'm only, this is my final semester, so I'm actually only taking one physics class. So that means I only have one exam, but still, midterm 2.0 time. It is currently a little bit after nine o'clock. Uh, I just got back from being at ODU for about 12 hours in between like taking my classes and working. And in between that time, I, I did get a little bit of studying done for quantum, but that's what I get to start on now. And it's one of those days where I'd really like to just go to sleep. It's always easier to talk about how to be a good physics major when you don't have any exams that week. And I'm not about to be a hypocrite and go to bed when I definitely have things that I should be doing. For those of you who have seen the video where I talk about how I study for exams and give examples with my uh, previous quantum midterm, that's not just for show, that's, that's literally what I do. So I've got my schedule all planned out for the week for how to be studying for quantum. Got a little bit done over the weekend, but not very much. So I got all the chapters laid out, and then at the very end I'm going to rework my homework assignments. Um, so far I'm feeling pretty good. The only thing is that we're going over discussion problems tomorrow in quantum, so our professor gave us some practice problems, and tomorrow he's going to expect us to volunteer to go up to the board and write out how we solved it. So, though I'm on good, though I'm at a good pace for finishing my studying by the time the exam comes, I'm still not to where I feel comfortable going up in front of a class and solving problems. I think that makes sense. The exam is covering many body physics and variational methods, so pretty much like going over identical particles versus indistingu or indistinguishable, distinguishable, distinguishable particles, uh, fermions and bosons, statistics, stuff like that. Um, how to write like a many body Hamiltonian and talk about symmetric versus anti-symmetric wave functions, what types of particles those fall under, and how to construct just overall wave functions for multi-particle systems. And then I've also talked about variational methods a million times. That's going to be the easy part, I think. So what I've been doing today, as much as I could, Mondays are my busiest day, so I didn't have too much time to study so far, but I did get a lot of the motivational stuff and some of the introductory uh, two-body system stuff down, did some practice problems. So I'm, I'm getting there. One fantastic resource I've been using for studying quantum, and I don't know if I posted it in other videos, like in the description. If I have, great, but I'm going to do it again. It's, uh, it's actually a website that has full worked solutions of Griffith's quantum mechanics problems. So that website is going to be linked in the description. It's really helpful. Obviously, I try to solve these problems as best I can myself first. Then if I get stuck, it's, it's a nice, it's another resource. I'm going to take advantage of it. Just don't let, don't look at the answers first. I, I hope that goes without saying that you should try to find out why certain answers are wrong before just looking at the right answer because there's so much more information contained in that wrong answer. Um, but I, again, I will leave that in the description because it's, it's so helpful. Figured I'd read for you one of the problems that I'm working on right now, just having to do with uh, two body systems in quantum. So it says, write down the Hamiltonian for two non-interacting identical particles in the infinite square well. Verify that the fermion ground state, well actually, uh, for the discussion problem for quantum, it's saying to construct um, the fermion ground state and show that it is an eigenfunction of H, so the Hamiltonian, the many-body Hamiltonian. Um, and then also come up with the eigenvalues associated with it. So all it's saying is, use what you know about two-body wave functions Construct one, write down the Hamiltonian for a two-body system, and show that when you act on that wave function with your Hamiltonian, you get back the wave function scaled to some degree. So times some constant. That constant is the eigenvalue. As long as you can do that, then you're good to go. But so far for this semester, I'm in really good shape as far as like where quantum's at, because I mean I do really well on all my homeworks. That it's like a free A, I'm not gonna not do well on my homeworks. And then, you know, got the 98 on my last quantum midterm, which is such a load. It's it's nice cushion to have. Then I'm, uh, <laughs> our professor said that he was really worried that he made the last exam too easy because a lot of us did really well. So I'm expecting this one to be a good amount harder, but, I mean, bring it on. The way I kind of look at it is there's a bunch of students in the class who... We try hard. We try really, really hard to make sure that we understand the material. And our professor does a really good job letting us know what's expected out of us. 
Okay, so if he says the exam's going to be harder because he made the last one too easy, I don't think that's going to change any of our grades because we're all going to study accordingly. We're all going to expect it to be harder, so we're going to study harder and get more of the material down. So, um, I, I expect a lot of the people that did well on the last exam, so, you know, uh, I expect them all to do more or less the same because a lot of them are trying to go to graduate school. If our professor says, this is what you need to know, you can't have those weak points. It's not like that anymore. There's no, oh, I guess that was a bad section for me. No, you need to understand it. And there's really no excuse to drop the ball. Not at this stage. If you guys are in like Physics 1 or Physics 2, it's totally fine. I understand that it's, you haven't built up the intuition yet to really maybe logic check yourself through all the problems. It will come. It will come, and there's, but there will be a time where you can't let yourself get lazy with that stuff anymore. Um, if you have a weak section or there's something that you don't understand, you don't move on. You, you gotta get it down. And I'm really thankful to be in a class where so many of the students in that class share that kind of opinion where yeah, people at ODU, they just try hard. They really want to do well. There's so many students in our quantum class that just... It's, it's almost like a rivalry, but between a bunch of different people, not just one different person. It's just a lot of people that give 100%. I'm really happy to work with them. Having said that, I also want to beat all of them and get the best grade that I can. So, I don't know if I'm ending this video right now, but it's going to be a short video because I need to focus, hit the ground running, you know, the more I can get done tonight, the less I'll have to do subsequent nights. So, I'm going to get back to studying now. I might see you in the next clip, or I might just end it. So, we'll see. Never mind. There was one more thing that I wanted to say. Rest in peace, Dragon Ball Super. I mean, seriously, look how nerdy this is. Thanks, Kelly. That was for sure the last thing, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. Oh, wait. Uh... Let me know in the comment section if you guys have exams and stuff. I'll see you guys there. That's the, that's the thing that I said. That's my catchphrase.